I study permafrost, and I, I want to show this image first because I do think when people think about the Arctic, you think about ice, and, um, and that's a really big part of it. But this is also a really big part of the Arctic, and this is this frozen ground. It's uh, you know underneath the ground, and it is hard to directly see using a map, but it's really important because this ground, this frozen ground, stores a lot of ice. When the ice melts, it collapses. You get something like this. And it also stores a lot of carbon, and this is why it's really important globally. Arctic is warming faster than anywhere on the planet. The air is warming. The ground is starting to thaw, and that blue area you see is being reduced like this quite a bit. And so this is, you know, we may lose 75% of the permafrost region if we continue on our current climate trajectory. So a lot of the work that I'm doing is looking at, you know, what actions can we take to, we don't want the map to look like this, right? Like we want it, we want, we want the map that we saw previously. For folks who are living in the Arctic, there's, you know, more than 4 million people who live on permafrost. And this is really important because if your home is like this and you're living really, really close to sea level, um, your only way in and out of your community, say, is by this runway. If that ground sinks a centimeter, two centimeters, that's really important. And so we need these maps to understand where the land is changing and what it's going to look like. And then for the rest of us on the planet who aren't living on permafrost, this is also really important um, because of the carbon that's stored in the ground. And you don't, not even to worry about the numbers so much here, but just to say that, you know, there's so much carbon that's been built up in permafrost. It's frozen right now, but as it thaws, that carbon can be released as greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, and methane. Um, the amount that may come out may be as large as or larger than emissions from the United States by the end of this century. And so there is a lot that the science, we need to learn. Uh, we need these maps so that we can learn it. But we do know that this is a really important source of carbon. And so that's really the sort of the two areas that I'm working on now.